Hey there, thank you so much for hanging out with me for a few minutes today while we talk about the new Asus NUC 14 Pro Plus. That's a big name for a little device. Now, look, for full transparency here, Asus did send this over for me to check out and share with you, but no money exchanged hands and they won't get to see this video before you do. So just wanted to get that out there for transparency's sake. So with that out of the way, let's jump in to the rest of the video. So first things first, let's take a quick look at what comes in the box with the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus. Inside this actually kind of cool box, we've got the NUC itself, which is surprisingly small and kind of an odd shape at this like five by four versus a standard square that we normally see. We also get a 150 watt power brick, a vase mount for the back of your monitor so you can mount the PC there if you want, some screws, some stickers, and some paperwork. And while we're here, let's go ahead and do this peel. So now that we've taken a look at what's in the box, let's talk about specs for just a moment. So my review unit came with an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H processor. Again, these names are so long these days. 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM and a one terabyte NVMe drive. So that's 16 cores and 22 threads that boost up to like 5.1 gigahertz and i'm honestly kind of blown away by how much power they can manage to squeeze into this tiny little box it really is kind of a testament to how far we've come with mini pcs over the last few years now on this intel 185h processor there is an intel ai boost npu on board and it's supposed to help with ai tasks but we're going to come back and talk about that later so the nuc 14 pro plus rocks a premium aluminum case that feels solid and looks great and again, I really do kind of dig this odd shape that's more rectangular than square like we've seen from so many, many PCs these days. The front is clean and simple with a power button, a USB-C port, and two USB-A ports. And each port is clearly labeled with its speed, which I appreciate because this way there's no more guessing games about what to expect from that port. So on each side, there will be some holes cut out or milled, I'm guessing, um, to allow air to flow through the device to help keep all of this power running at a much cooler temperature. Around the back, we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports with DisplayPort 1.4 support, two HDMI 2.1 ports, a 2.5 gig LAN port, and even a Kensington lock slot. So for this being such a small package, it really does have a lot of connectivity options, including Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6, which is great, but I'm honestly kind of disappointed that they didn't include Wi-Fi 7 on this device, as Asus does actually have Wi-Fi 7 routers in their lineup, and I've actually got a video coming out soon about one of those devices. One of the things that I actually really love about this NUC 14 Pro Plus is how easy it is to upgrade the upgradables. There is no need to wrestle with these tiny little screws that we often see. All we have to do is screw one little lock, pop a couple of tabs, and the bottom panel just slides off. Once you've got that off, you've got access to the RAM and storage. Like I mentioned earlier, my unit came with 32 gigs of RAM, but you can max it out with 96 gigs if you need it. Also, there is a second NVMe slot, so you can add more storage down the line. But a complaint that I've got about their storage configuration is that while there are two NVMe slots, only one of them is 2280, while the other is a shorter 2242 slot. And while that isn't in itself necessarily a problem, the device's 2280 slot came pre-populated with the one terabyte drive, leaving me to come up with a 2242 drive as I don't have any of those just laying around like I do with the 2280s. Luckily for me though, the folks over at Zyke reached out to me a while back and sent over their USB 4 NVMe enclosure called the Zyke Drive. Now the Zyke Drive is made out of an aircraft aluminum alloy and has a sleek minimalist design and it supports USB 4.0, which means that it can transfer data up to 40 gigabits per second and it also supports a wide variety of different NVMe sizes. Now setting up the Zyke drive was super simple. Just open the enclosure, pop in your drive, put the lid back on, and it's just as simple as that. So one of the things that I really do like about the Zyke drive and what they've done with the configuration is that they've included a thermal pad for the NVMe drive inside, which helps turn the entire enclosure into a heat sink for the drive, help keeping temperatures down. So the Zyke drive is a great option for anybody who wants to either add additional storage to their computer like I've done, or take their storage on the go and have fast connectivity for all of their data whenever they need it. 
Also, in my particular case, it saved my butt because I didn't have to go out and find a new drive to expand the storage in my NUG 14 Pro Plus. I was able to use the four terabyte NVMe drive I already had laying on my desk. So if you'd like to pick one of these up or get more information on the Zyke drive, check out the video description for links with more details. Thanks to Zyke for sending this over when they did. So at this point, I've actually been using the NUG as my daily driver for a couple of weeks now, and I'm actually pretty impressed. Everyday tasks like web browsing, email, and document editing were a breeze, but this little device really shined for me personally with my video editing. My timeline in Adobe Premiere was smooth and responsive, and rendering a 20 minute 1080p video took less than nine minutes, and that's actually pretty good in my opinion for a mini PC. Now this isn't a gaming PC, but I couldn't resist testing out some games. Uh, but first I ran 3D Mark's Night Raid benchmark and got an overall score of 27,791, a graphics score of 33,571, and a CPU score of 14,068. So look, I'm not much of an actual gamer. So the games that I tested were often on the older side and sometimes a bit less resource intensive. So let's talk about those numbers. All the games that I tested uh, were run at 1080p on medium settings. On Deus Ex, I saw 50 to 60 frames per second, but I did see some stuttering and some screen tearing, so that one was kind of a letdown for me. Fallout 4, I saw frame rates right around 30 FPS, no matter what graphics settings I used. Also, the frame timings were the worst of any of the different tests that I ran. GTA 5 actually played exceptionally well at like 75 to 90 FPS with great frame timings. This was actually a lot of fun to play on such a small device. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was really the only game that I ran with a standardized benchmark that was built into the game itself via the settings page. Now, in the end, we saw an average FPS of 47, but I also noticed strangely that the benchmark registered my Windows 11 home as Windows 10 for whatever that's worth. And lastly, Skyrim was actually very, very playable at a full 60 FPS while I ran around and tried to save the world. So considering the size of this device, I'm actually pretty impressed with what it was able to do with regards to gaming. Now, one thing to note when it comes to these heavier workloads like video editing or gaming or things like that is that the fan inside can get a little bit loud and shrill. It's that typical high-pitched laptop fan sound Look, it's not really a deal breaker for me, especially with like headphones on, but it is something to keep in mind. So remember that NPU that I mentioned earlier? Well, I spent literally hours trying to find real world applications for it, but I couldn't get it to do anything. I tried using it with Audacity and Copilot and Lightroom, but had no luck. And it feels like Asus is trying to future-proof the device, but for now, the NPU is more of a promise than it is a reality. Now, I do have one other little complaint with this device, and that is that it came with Windows 11 Home. While I understand that that's not a huge deal and that I can upgrade the license to a Pro license if I want to, with the price of the device, I would honestly expect Pro to come on it. And that kind of leads nicely into the price of the NUC 14 Pro Plus. There are three different CPU SKUs, and each of those SKUs comes either with or without storage and RAM. So if you get the base SKU with no storage or RAM, it runs you about $620, but my fully spec review unit with the i9-185H, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, the one terabyte NVMe drive ran $1,239. And that is a lot of money, but on the flip side of that, you are getting a lot of power in a very small package and a three-year warranty from a very reputable company. So who is this NUC for? If you're somebody who's looking for a powerful, compact, and semi-upgradable PC that can handle demanding tasks like video editing and even some light gaming, the NUC 14 Pro Plus is a fantastic option. Just be aware of the NPU's current limitations, at least based on my testing, and of course, that premium price tag. So. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm genuinely curious to know what you guys think about the NUG 14 Pro Plus. Is it worth the price? Are you excited about the potential of the NPU? Let me know down in the comment section down below. But I think with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I do, again, want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me here today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.